Asbestos is a mineral naturally occurring in the ground and is still mined today and made into building products. It's been found in over 3,000 products and we still come across new products all the time that contain asbestos. Quite often on construction sites or developments or change of land use, illegal dumping might have occurred or burials of sites. What we treat it is is an unexpected finds and we want to make a response to protect everyone's health. There's probably 30% of older homes that still have asbestos products. That's not a problem if they're not disturbed. It's only when the materials are disturbed or they've suffered environmental degradation. It can be in the linings of their wet areas of their homes, fibro cement sheeting on their roofs, insulating around pipework, boilers and things like that for heat, around electrical componentry. So it's always good to know where the asbestos products are so that people know not to disturb them or they can be removed safely prior to disturbance and thereby not exposing people to the um, health effects of asbestos. Generally you can determine if a product is asbestos by the age and the visual inspection and then that can be confirmed by laboratory analysis. You might just take a sample of a single product and assume that, say for example, that corrugated roof sheeting is the same throughout the development, thereby limiting your sort of expenses if you're on a budget. The more that a country understands where the asbestos comes from, the products that have been used in their country, well then they can share that knowledge of what they can expect in their own country. And by doing that, that's going to be setting up laboratories and things like that to understand what type of asbestos they've got, what type of products they've got in their country, what was typically used, where it's likely to be found, so that it's that education process and then to minimise exposure for asbestos for the health of everyone. The setup that we use in Australia is a very cheap setup to get a laboratory going. If I was to open in another country today, it's a proven method, but one of the most important things, it's an economical method. It's not highly specialised, it's optical microspiratory. So people can be easily trained with experience and you don't need a highly specialised person or highly specialised training. For setting up the laboratory for either asbestos fibre counting or the bulk analysis of the asbestos material or potential material, the basic laboratory equipment that you'll need is, number one, is an effective fume hood which is fitted with a high efficiency particulate air filter or a HEPA filter so that the analysts are covered from a health and safety perspective. That's very important. You would need a, a good quality stereo microscope. And that's probably the most important part of the analysis. So it takes someone really experienced to understand what asbestos looks like because it comes in so many products and different forms. You use the microscopes because the asbestos fibres are, are extremely small. So you can't really see them with the naked eye. You see it in enough detail to know what the likely fibre is, just like having a big magnifying glass. Stereo microscope shines light down onto the sample, and it's about a ten times magnification. We can then examine the material and have a look to see if there are fibres there. With experience, we can almost certainly say that it's asbestos or it isn't asbestos and what type of asbestos. You could do with one microscope and change the stages in and out. For convenience and efficiency, you'll end up buying two microscopes set up for the counting method or for the identification method. But really, you can get set up very quickly and very cheaply. There are other methods that are used and that we use them as well with electron microspiratory or X-ray diffraction to confirm if we're ambiguous with our result. But once we've identified the fibre type and the different types of fibres within a sample or the fibres may not be asbestos, we then report that in a laboratory standard report.